Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video we want to attempt to prove that the square root of a prime number is an irrational number. Okay, So we want to show that the square root of a prime number cannot be represented uh, as, as a fraction or as a rational number. And is in fact irrational. Uh, this proof is a proof by contradiction, okay, and it's a nice little proof in the sense that it allows us to show that actually the square root of all prime numbers are in fact irrational numbers, okay. So let's maybe start the proof. So before I can actually before I can actually do this, I need to have a prime number to start off with, okay. So let's say uh, given given any prime number number p, okay, okay, uh, we we want to show okay, that the square root of p is an irrational is an irrational number. Okay? Is an irrational number. Okay? That's what we'd like to show. We'd like to show that the square root of p is an irrational number. So let's do the proof. So the proof uh, it's a proof by contradiction. Okay, so it's a proof by contradiction. Okay? And the way we're gonna do it is gonna be something like this. So let's assume that the square root of p is irrational okay 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 so let's let's assume okay that first of all that p is a prime number okay is a prime okay and that the square root of p is rational okay so what does that mean okay well then that means so therefore okay therefore we can write the square root of p as a fraction or as a rational number so therefore there exists there exists uh, a's and b's, okay, they are elements of the integers, and actually we'll just make them positive, okay, okay, uh, where b is not equal to zero, okay, and also let's make sure that these a's and b's have no common factors, so the GCD of a and b is equal to one, okay, oh sorry, is equal to one, okay, therefore there exists an a and b an element of z, where b is not equal to zero, the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to one, okay, such that, such that, okay, the square root of p, can be written as a divided by b. Okay? So what does this what does this what does this imply? Well if the square root of p is equal to a, a a over b, well then we must have p is equal to the square of of a over b. So we must have p is equal to a squared over b squared. We must have b squared p uh, is equal to a squared. Okay? And this is an important identity here for us. Okay, This particular equation here is actually really important. And this is what's going to help us with this particular proof. So to our assumption okay, that the square root of p can actually be represented as a rational number, okay, we've ended up with this particular relationship here okay, between the a squared and between this right-hand side and the left-hand side. Okay. Now let's just, let's just recall, okay, recall, okay, okay, uh, so let's recall that from the fundamental theorem, from the fundamental, from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, of arithmetic, okay, of arithmetic, uh, a and b, a and b, can be written, written as a product of prime numbers, of prime numbers okay that's important so a and b can be written as a product of prime numbers okay now so that means a can be written as p1 to the to let's say p1 to some power times times let's say first prime to let's say to the to the let's say to the to the n1 times p2 to the n2 times p3 to the n3 and all the way through to p n to the n to the end, let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. So all of these, all well, not to the end. Let's say to the to the to the n to the n to the n i to the n i. Okay, right. Let's just say something like that. So basically, what we have is that a can be written as a product of primes. Uh, the primes might occur more than once, in which case the powers are going to be greater than uh, great great greater than one. Okay, uh, and also b can be written as a product of primes. Let's say q q one uh, to the n one uh, q two to the n two. Okay, Q3 to the N3, all the way through to Q, sorry, oh, Q, that should be Q here, Q, uh, QN to the, to the N, let's say to the NI, okay? So that can be written as a product of primes. Now, 
All of these powers, okay, all of these powers of the primes, yeah, uh, are either even or odd, yeah, okay? So the prime powers, the prime powers, okay, are either, are either even or odd, okay? That's important, okay? So irrespective of the prime, okay, that occurs in its factorization, okay, it either occurs an even number of times or an odd number of times, okay? But, okay, but, okay, a squared would be equal to the square of p1 n1, p2 n2, p3 n3, all the way through to pn n i squared, okay? Which, from our, uh, our laws of exponents, okay, that's equivalent to p1 2n1, p2 2n2, p3 2n3, all the way through to the nth prime, pn 2n, let's say, i. Okay? And in the similar fashion, we have that b squared would be equal to the square of q1n1, q2n2, 